stay. Today I'll just be sharing a few postures that you can do on the floor in the comfort of your own home, perhaps during a personal seclusion or retreat. And these are postures that would generally be considered yin postures or restorative postures uh, that could be done with a greater series of hatha yoga postures, including other standing or seated poses. For this, I'm going to be using a bolster that I'm sitting on right now to show how you can use props to make your practice more comfortable when you're on the floor. And I've also got a blanket here, so any soft blanket that you want to use will do. Um, this is kind of the most cozy practice or one of the most rejuvenating and restful yoga practices. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing is if you are able to sit on the floor and you do like having a meditation posture or practice, having a bolster like this can be really nice and I'll show it to you now. So I've got this blanket on top and then this bolster is about a foot long and four inches tall, about two feet wide. And they're really nice just for being able to use both as a meditation cushion and also as a stretching prop. So I'm gonna turn it to the side this way. And the first thing is just to do a restorative back bend. So allowing your hips to open up and laying back just like this, letting the hips drop and settle into the mat. And the bolster should just be directly under the hips, under the sacrum, so that you can sort of scoot your spine, walk your heels out, and get a nice elongation through this part of the hips and the lower back. So this is our first posture. And you're just letting gravity do the work here. You can open up the arms in a T-shape and just relax as much as you can. For the sake of this, I'm just gonna be demonstrating rather than instructing as if it were a class. So I'll let you practice at your own pace, in your own space. So next, this one, doing a bridge can be really helpful if your hips are having trouble relaxing. You can always do this without the bolster, pressing into the hips, supporting them with the elbows, and lifting up towards the sky, and then lowering back down onto the mat can be a nice way, or onto the bolster can be a great way for letting those hips relax if you are having a little bit of tension or tightness, either in the front of the hips, in the glutes, or the lower back. So next, we're here, you can just cross one leg over the other, and then scoot your knee back towards you for a figure four. This is also an inverted pigeon pose. Just stretching the back of the hips, the glutes, piriformis. This is great for running, just letting the legs stretch out, relax. So both sides. This is one of the easiest poses that you can do to help release a lot of tension in the biggest muscles of the legs. You can also interweave your fingers through your toes, like so. It can be kind of intense at first, but once you get them in there, spacing out the toes helps release the lower back so that lumbar spine and sacrum helps get released when you massage the feet and the toes. So if you're having trouble with your lower back, look to the feet, look to the soles of the feet and toes. Okay, so next we're gonna do just a little pulling the knee into the chest where we stretch the other leg out. Keep this leg active just because you always wanna stay dynamic and active in your stretching. Then when you're ready to release, you can release through the hips, first that active tension and then that conscious relaxation. So same thing, 
the other side, just switching sides. And then you can bring both knees in. If you like, you can do a twist to one side. You can also do this without the bolster, but since I've got it here, it makes it a little more intense when you have the bolster. Your knee has a further distance to travel. I'll show you on the other side so it's easier to see. Your knee, normally if you're on the floor, will be closer to the floor. But when you're on the bolster, you have more opportunity to twist over to the side. And then, once again, allowing the hips to relax. As you'll notice, I haven't moved the bolster yet for any of these, but there's a lot of other positions that you can do with the bolster. So stretching the legs up, legs out, making the circles, if you wish. Stretching one leg back, one leg forward. This is a great way to passively engage the muscles of the glutes and the hips while letting the, thigh, the spine fully lengthen and relax. And then we can bring the legs over the head for a plow pose if that's something that you're familiar with. This is a great pose for stretching out the spine. Next, I'm just going to scoot off of the bolster. Now, the bolster is more of my lower back, and there's varying, various versions of this, but the Supta Baddha Konasana, the supported butterfly pose, can be great for leaning back with a heart opener. You can also try sitting cross-legged or in half lotus or full lotus if you like, but just keeping the heels, the soles of the feet together, allowing the heart to open without jackknifing the neck or extending too much of that back then, making sure that you feel good, you're not compressing anywhere that's overly intense. Okay. Next, I'm just going to scoop the bolster back just a little bit more. Lean back here. This can be really nice as a resting pose. Finding that space where the bolster is directly under the heart and then reaching back so that your head, the back of your neck is just supported by that top edge of the bolster. And reaching the arms out if your shoulders don't uh, have the flexibility to let your hands touch the floor, that's okay. You can use this posture to help relax the chest and shoulders. Next, I'm just going to turn the bolster 90 degrees. This can also help with opening the shoulders and the chest once again. But I'm just going to scoot right over that front edge of the bolster and then let my head rest off the back so now the entire spine is supported by the bolster. You can keep the knees bent here if this feels good. You can also straighten. Let the arms go out by the side to open the chest. And even if you're not accustomed to doing yoga, it's not part of your daily uh, practice, if you will. These poses can help with restoring just from any uh, vigorous athletic activity, manual labor, or just helping the body restore from a desk job type posture. So all of these kinds of things are important to take in mind when we're remembering what yoga is, what it's about. It's for everyone, and so you can find a way that works for you and just experiment with that. So the last thing is just putting the bolster under the knees. This is really nice. Um, there's a lot of um, Qigong and um, other, other teachers aside from yoga that recommend sleeping. If you're going to choose to sleep flat on your back, which can be really nice um, or very beneficial for the spine, to fully reset and elongate. It is important though to have something under the legs. This is nice, just it keeps the, uh, the blood flow going to the heart. When the legs are straight, the knees tend to lock 
and then this actually can restrict blood flow, so this increases the amount of energy flow. And if you're practicing, uh, say, in a, in a yoga class and you're doing your final pose of a savasana, the uh, supine just laying on the floor, this can be really nice to relax the lower back as well. So just finding out how these different parts of the body are connected and what works, especially when you're supporting yourself with a bolster. So that's the, uh, that's the supine uh, supported restorative poses for now. There's a whole lot more. I, I encourage you to explore the world of restorative yoga, yin yoga, hatha yoga generally, and find what works for you. Just incorporate these things in your life. It doesn't have to be so much about the dogma of the practice as much as it is just having your own experience, knowing what works for you, knowing how you can integrate these things for a more balanced and nourished life. Thank you.